I don't have anything witty to say other than, why do they draw her like a really ugly toad? The evil Mistress Nine, or whatever her name is, when she's like all crazy and ready to eat something, I'm like, wow, that's... I think they were going for disturbing, because god dang it, that's disturbing. <laughs> quite my thing was her mouth it's like there we go again with villains having these huge oversized mouths that they grin with god it's like looking at rubios all over again <laughs> that's when i was talking about the whole toad thing really big mouth toad mouth mm -hmm. and also the weird eye kind of twirling around thing I'm like Ooh. well let's move on to the actual episode intro of hello i am lux and i remember and this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episodes 37 and 38. Yeah, this Mistress Nine or whatever is just I'm like, really? Did they really have to draw her like that? Because that's just, maybe that's the whole point, because it's just uncomfortable and ugly and ew, weird angles and stuff like that. Also, apparently she can extract souls at will. That's kind of freaky. <laughs> well think about it you know all of the witches five were collecting hosts and vessels mm -hmm. and poor sailor saturn being stuck only as a soul and doing what she can <laughs> and doing better than everyone else she accomplished more than the other nine <laughs> rescue chibi use keep mistress nine from using the silver crystal restore both of those things to chibi use's body and take the souls of the four captured inner scouts and get them back. And before that, she was blocking Mistress Nine from accessing the power and keeping Mistress Nine from abandoning the body, therefore limiting her power. And doesn't she also, like, boost Mamaru's power or something? Because he can, like, fly now and stuff? Yeah, I don't ever remember Tuxedo Mask being able to fly, but they never explain how anyone can just fly and hover in the air, and yes, he says that he feels like he got power from Chibiyusa and from Hataru also. And that was the first time we kind of had a transformation sequence for him. Also, well, what is his attack? Something something bomber? <laughs> uh, tuxedo La Smoking Bomber. How do you not remember these things? Attack names are very important. <laughs> Because I'm not paying attention to the attack names when I'm like, when I'm like following the story. <laughs> because I like the attacks and everything, but I don't need to know their names to enjoy the spectacle of a big giant laser beam coming out of someone's hands. <laughs> but how do you know which big giant laser beam it's supposed to be if you don't listen to the attack name? By the color. Sparkling wide pressure and Jupiter coconut cyclone are nothing alike. <laughs> I said by the color, because Tuxedo Mask's blast is almost pure white and everyone else's have slightly bits of color to it, or a theme to it, or roses, or whips, or chains, <laughs> or wink We're swords. We're still talking about Sailor Moon, right? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's a hidden S&M fetish here. <laughs> You're the one who's going on about whips and chains when we started off with laser attacks. Well... The Wink Sword, or whatever it's called, and Love Me Chain? I mean, come on, Venus. <laughs> well, she is protected by the planet of love and beauty, and apparent. Wait, I just answered. No, I. Just no. <laughs> uh, and it really says coconut in the name? Yes. I, I need to watch that more because I did not notice that because I don't remember it saying coconut anywhere in there. <laughs> no, it's Jupiter, Coconut Cyclone, Mars Snake Fire, Mercury Aqua Mirage, Venus Wink Chain Sword. All these crazy attack names. And I thought I was bad at naming things. <laughs> well, remember these are being said in English on a Japanese show. So in comparison, you know, Make the show be all in English and then put the attacks in Japanese and it would probably sound a lot cooler. <laughs> so it's the reverse here. Yeah, they do like to use English words. And sometimes I want to say, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Like Americans don't do the same thing? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. All the people who want to be Japanese are, that are definitely not and look to anime as a resource to become Japanese. Not a good idea. There's a reason they call it export culture. 
I was thinking more general than the anime fandom, but okay, go for the niche. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about even deeper than the anime fandom. Because most anime people understand that, yeah, this is fake. <laughs> and then there's those poor, poor people out there going, this is what Japanese is. Like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> Go read some books sometime. And I'm not talking about manga. <laughs> Though there are some actual manga on Japanese history that's actually accurate. Because it's about Japanese history and it's meant to be educational. Yes, because if you can make something educational look fun, two birds, one stone. But mm -hmm. yeah, looking at... Something from exportation and expecting it to be an accurate representation would be like someone watching some episodes of Starsky and Hutch and thinking that's how the U.S. Police Department works. <laughs> watching any cop drama, even the modern ones, you're like, yeah, no. All right, so way far off topic. Back to the show. <laughs> we had a topic? Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> Yes, I would like to know how the Sailor Scouts can still perform any attacks after they've given all their power to Super Sailor Moon. Mm hmm And then you get the um, wrinkle of Chibi Moon, of Super Chibi Moon. <laughs> yeah, where did her extra power come from? Because we didn't see that chalice getting filled with anything. Mm hmm I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, where, where does she get this extra stuff from? But yeah, I have... No idea where it would come from, and I'm like, doesn't it, like, deplete some from Sailor Moon? Does it come from the future? What? No logical explanation provided, but that is also basically how it happens in the manga. Um, first two chapters of Volume 8, by the way. And on things that are what actually happened in the manga and still don't make sense, what's the point of putting up the barrier when nobody's trying to escape mistress nine wasn't trying to go anywhere why don't you guys include your powers on blasting her into oblivion because we really only needed the barrier once master pharaoh 90 was trying to vesselize yeah but how it is in the anime is he was pretty much coming out the instance that what's her name happened and that's when they put up the barrier in the tv series when pharaoh 90 was coming out of the ground it just seems like Shouldn't we be focused on winning? Because Sailor Moon always has a magical MacGuffin that can restore the entire planet. So shouldn't we just be focused on winning? <laughs> yeah, and every time I'm watching this, I'm like, so we're going to fix everything, right? Your magical MacGuffin suddenly will fix everything, right? And is this going to be one of those times where your magical MacGuffin kills you and then you get brought back magically or something? Because uh, I'm pretty sure it's happened at least once in some of the movies I've watched of this way back when, but it's been forever. Yeah, in the movies, the magical MacGuffin usually kills you. So, it's not like you were trying to go over um, differences, so what are the differences in this episode? Uh, they tended to make things a little more streamlined. Like, we had an emergency news broadcast report break in on the manga, which really wasn't necessary, so looks like they cut it. A uh, little bit of the phrasing was different when Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune were talking about signs from their element that things were going on, but that could just be translation differences. And definitely didn't have any weird eye movements from Mistress Nine because mm, manga, no actual motion. Oh, and that reminds me, um, something I found out recently about the manga. Depending on what version you got, if it's the most recent reprints, the artist actually went back in and redrew some of the scenes. Well, mine is the anniversary edition, but uh, now that's even more reason to go ahead and keep my older ones from Mixed Comics, Chick Comics, and whatever other publisher I got them from. Okay, so I think the episode ends with Chippy Moon and Silly Moon now in their super forms and mistress nine coming out of the ooze or was it um pharaoh 90 finally forming a little bit and trying to attack them the episode ended with sailor moon and sailor chibi moon's transformation sequence so they got to reuse most of the transformation footage at the beginning of the next episode just in case we forgot that they transformed into their super modes you see, that was so much energy as if it annoyed you. 
When watching the episodes back to back, I don't need a reminder of what happened four minutes ago. <laughs> uh, but they're aired a week apart. <laughs> it's not their fault that we happen to binge it back to back. <laughs> yeah, and then we get this big attack and... I didn't realize there was rock music and rock guitar and the background music until I had to pause it, go off, take care of something, come back. I was like, wait, that's a rock guitar there. Cool. Because <laughs> I'm really used to like flutes and violins and pianos and other musical instruments that are kind of softer coming from Sailor Moon. <laughs> Which just shows that you don't pay attention because you pointed that out before I had watched the episode. And so I was listening for it and I was like, what? That's the epic battle music. I'm sure that's in at least two other episodes. <laughs> I'm sure it is, but I never really started paying attention to the background music before. It's usually just there and it's pleasant, but this time I was like, oh, that's a rock guitar. Yes, but being aware of the background music can help heighten your overall experience. Because you're actively listening to it instead of just being subconsciously influenced by it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and speaking of influenced by it and the a scene that I forgot to mention in the previous episode with that almost made me tear up again which is Hataro saying goodbye <laughs> yeah that was pretty much spot on to the manga the only thing that really and since we went back to Hataro's supposed death that was really different there was how long Chibiusa dragged out the fact that Hotaru is in our hearts now. I'm like, if you say that one more time, child. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't really pick up on that at all. <laughs> uh, this is why you're so good at nitpicking, because I'm like, I didn't notice that. You're like, you didn't notice it? It was right there, staring me in the face, bugging the heck out of me. I'm like, what was bugging the heck out of you? That right there. What right there? That right there. That sound you're making. What sound I'm making? Nah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge reference. Check. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we pull out the big, ultra-powerful attacks of doing a rainbow double moon heartache. <laughs> Plus combining that with all the attacks that we already mentioned. And, yeah, we're still losing. Yeah, especially since all the Sailor Scouts start literally dropping like flies. Yes. And poor Chibi Moon, she's the only one who gets caught. Everyone else just gets to fall and land on the ground. <laughs> I mean, I know they're older, but technically they're still, you know, junior high students. Mm hmm And there were three other Scouts who could have caught them. At least the Outer Scouts were being supportive. You know, the, are you alright? Hang in there. Difference to the manga, I'm going to preface this with saying I may get the pair wrong, but if I recall correctly, it was Neptune holding Venus. Mm. More high action music, but this time it was all the stuff I was talking about before. It didn't have any rock guitar in it. It was just heavy violin, some bass in there, some other instruments. Uh, and then this episode ends. And I'm like, but, but, but I don't want to wait till next week. <laughs> What? Just because Sailor Moon has dove into Master Pharaoh 90, Sailor Saturn has been awakened, I, you know, next week's preview basically gave the entire episode away. <laughs> uh, I have a tendency to like, either not watch those or skim them. <laughs> well, I was double checking my manga, I'm like, mm, we've only got one more chapter, right? And is it a full chapter or is it half a chapter and then we start the new arc mid-chapter? That makes me wonder um, how we're going to do things in these following episodes. Because I'm like, we're building up to like the final thing in this arc. So are we going to go straight into the next arc? Like we did last time with the previous series. Where it went from Chibi Moon's introduction. That was the end of that arc. And then suddenly, oh, next episode. We're right into the next arc. <laughs> well, that's actually how the manga is written. Because the author snags you mid-chapter. So you don't have a good stopping point where you can just quit. Because you're in the middle of a chapter, and then it starts all over again. So we're almost there. We're almost to Helios. <laughs> and then we get a break. You're like, no! <laughs> I can wait if it means they animate him well. Oh, that reminds me. Luna actually looked pretty good in this episode when she was sitting at the keyboard. Her face was round again in the proper shape and everything. 
All three of them looked much better this episode. Because mm -hmm, in the previous episode, they had very angular features and looked nothing like their manga counterparts. <laughs> no, extremely angular. They didn't even look like their previous season anime counterparts. Mm -hmm. So have you gone over all the differences yet? Or... <laughs> pretty much. I mean, the two have always been pretty much spot on with minor differences. So going back to Saturn's emergence and everything, and as she's about to swing the blade, and I'm like, is this where Sigmund's going to pop him, like, grab the thing and go, no. And you're thinking, that's, probably, that's exactly what happens in the next episode. Keep my mouth shut. Ah, uh, Sigmund speaks many words. <laughs> yes, but if I speak any words, then I give credence one way or the other to your theory. And I try to avoid any spoilers for you, even though you don't always return the courtesy. I'm sorry, I try to do the same, but every once in a while I completely forget you haven't watched whatever episode of whatever thing we're currently watching together. <laughs> or I get spoiled in the chat room, and it's been long enough since I realized that was a spoiler, and I go to talk to you, and suddenly it pours out of my mouth. <laughs> so, still enjoying this season's adaptation of the manga? Yes. I thought you were going to ask, are you still enjoying the current outro? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's an obvious answer. <laughs> yes, but these past episodes had more for Tuxedo Mask because, you know, we got that brief transformation sequence. They used a touch of the sound that was used for him in the first iteration of the anime. We have him using his Tuxedo La Smoking Bomber attack, which we see very rarely. And we have him screaming heartbroken over Usa. And oh, let's see what else. We have him flying. <laughs> oh yeah, and that also reminds me, um, Chibi Usa actually called Sailor Moon Mom in this episode. Which was really cool and also did not happen in the manga. Ah. Yeah, this is all really neat stuff. As I said before, I'm like, next episode would be nice right now, please. It's really uh, not that far away. Oh, yeah, I know. But then there's the whole getting enough time to sit down and watch it. I can't help you with that. Nope. Yeah, try asking people over at Patreon. Maybe they can help you. <laughs> well, shall we share our final thoughts on these episodes? Mm -hmm. I will I pretty much sum up my thoughts on as... Can't wait for the next episode. It's getting really exciting. The animation is really nice. The lady is too creepy. She actually got less creepy when she transformed. <laughs> because she was less human. Humans are trained to recognize the human form. So a distorted human form is more disturbing than, oh, it's a monster. Mm -hmm. Well, like these episodes, can't wait for more. I'm just wondering if we're taking a hiatus after this next episode because it's another arc break. Uh, definitely enjoying the series. Wish that the Blu-ray release was A, both coming out sooner, B, a little less pricey for the uh, special edition, and C, had more than 13 episodes. I could fit a whole lot more into the same shelf space. So I'm hoping that when we get to the end of all of it, They'll re-release a full box set. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. Definitely on my list of things to purchase. Until then, I'll just stream it online. <laughs> Which I hope I can still manage to do. I had a lot of trouble watching this week. I couldn't get any of the episodes to play on Viz, and I had trouble getting it to work through Hulu. Uh, you could have tried Crunchyroll, because that always seems to work for me. Well, I got Hulu to work, so... Ah, well, at least you have now have a third backup. <laughs> yes. And this has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episodes 37 and 38. Thank you for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lux's art? He also has a Patreon page and does take commissions. Please check the link below for commission availability.